Boy, can I relate to tractor problems. And uh, this gentleman, I, I feel his pain. I have been there with just about, well, not even just tractors, but anything brand new. And, <laughs> you know, what's the right word? Um, I, don't, I don't know what the right word is. It'll come to me at some point in this video, but this happened to a Kubota tractor, all right? A brand new Kubota tractor before we get into it here. And something, something about it just makes me smile when things happen to John Deere and Kubota because I've had a lot of love since I've started showing Coyote and I, I own a brand new Kubota. I just bought a brand new Kubota. I like Kubota. I sell used Kubotas. They're a good brand. I sell John Deere uh, as well. But when you start to talk about the brands besides Kubota and Deere, they're, you, you know, you get the, the folks out there that just you know, try to say, well, yeah, you're just getting junk, you know, get one of the best out there, Komodo deer, blah, 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 blah. And this is an example of how just bad stuff can happen at any brand, any machine out there. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's a tractor or a, or a, or a truck or a trailer or an ATV or a house. I don't care what it is, right? You can use the, you can buy the best and buy the top dollar, whatever it is, and you can still have problems. And some of it is um, the manufacturing process, sometimes it's dealer related, but the point is it can happen to anything. And so take that into consideration that sometimes you think, man, I'm just going to, I'm going to pay for the best because I'm not going to have any issues then. Well, guess what? You can still have issues. And this is an example of that. And so, um, does it really pay to, to buy the most expensive thing out there? That that's, I guess the takeaway, right? And, and maybe it's less likely to happen. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe there's data on that, but um, it still can happen. And <laughs> I would be the kind of guy that it happens to, and it has happened to. Let's get into uh, what this gentleman has to say. He says, I traded in a mint two-year-old 35-hour Kubota L2501 a few months ago on a new Kubota M6060. Pretty big upgrade. Had it delivered, and within the first hour and a half, Two days later, doing loader work, I noticed the front end loader would instantly start to drop six inches or so in the first few seconds when there was any height change. It would just drop down further. He, st he spoke to the dealer. They swapped the front end loader self-leveling valve. They bled the system and then instantly had the same issue. A Kubota engineer slash rep came out to the dealer and then they disassembled the valve, found some corrosion. The next move was to swap filters, fluid, and install a second new valve. Now the tractor has about 11 hours on it, and upon removal of the filters, heavy contamination on magnets, both metal and some other non-metallic. So they put a halt on installing a new front end loader valve to avoid risking it, as it was the last one available in the US. Again, one of the reasons you're buying one of the biggest, most expensive brands out there is because they have parts availability, right? I digress. Had the tractor prompt for regen and bumped the RPMs up to 2200. During the regen, I could hear a metallic noise coming from aft of the front end loader valve, somewhere near the filters. Sounds almost like when you have a bearing go bad. At idle, you cannot hear it. So my guess is hydraulic pump as it is RPM based. And now we're at 19 hours. This is kind of a rough situation and there's still no resolution for this guy. So he's asking me what my recommendation would be. <laughs> Uh, from their viewpoint, it looks like the next step is for them to bring it into the shop for further diagnostics. You know, this customer uses the tractor a couple of times a week for business purposes, and they can't guarantee him that a loaner is available while they're, they've got it in for diagnostics and trying to figure out what's going wrong. So they traded in a perfectly working tractor, albeit much smaller, for a brand new tractor, expecting a perfectly working tractor. So in a sense, they may be out even more than the new tractor loss, you know, inconvenience of not having it, plus having to rent a new machine in the meantime, that won't be covered. Looking for my advice on, on what to do. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze. And it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. You know, so um, being somebody who has had to go through all sorts of experiences like this, you know, and also I sell equipment too, right? And, and knowing 
the simple truth that anything mechanical can and will break down. It's just a matter of time. Um, knowing that human beings are building this equipment and putting it together, that we're all flawed and going to have issues. I have, good or bad, lowered my expectations about just about everything out there. So I want to make sure that my customers are taken care of, right? So if we do have an issue, which isn't all that often, but if we do have an issue, I, I think it's more about how you take care of your customers um, and letting them know that you're going to take care of them, right? Because no, half the problem is that it doesn't work. And the other half is that it seems like whoever you bought it from doesn't care, doesn't, doesn't think it's a big deal that it doesn't work. And they just kind of get around to taking care of it whenever they can. So I can see it from every, every side, you know, just kind of from that aspect. And, um, you know, I told, I told them, I said, I don't have the magic answer for you. Right. I mean, part of this is that I've, I've worked with many dealers and they are all set up differently. And some of them have fewer and fewer, unfortunately have guys that have been around for a long time and, you know, know all the tricks of the trade and uh, can make things happen. And a lot of these newer guys just don't have the knowledge unfortunately, and hopefully they stay in the industry and build it back up. Uh, but during the pandemic, I mean, I think that just helped exacerbate the whole issue. And a lot of, a lot of these experienced technicians just left and went away. Uh, and they, same thing with general managers and higher ups and everything else that care. And so there's just fewer people there at every dealership that care. And so it's just spreading people thin and it's just a bad situation. But, you know, I, I, I said that at this point you have sunk costs, right? You're, you're already down the path. You've traded in your old machine. You have the new machine. You've already gone through several of these repair steps and ruled things out. You've invested that time that you can't get back. So you pretty much have to leave that in the past and, and look at it from this point forward as you're really that much closer to resolution on this issue. You know? And if you go and get a whole, sell this one off, you're gonna lose money and then go get another brand new machine, you may wind up in the same boat. Most likely you wouldn't, but you could, but you're gonna lose more money because of that which could most likely and would most likely be a greater loss than the rental of a temporary machine and the other downtime. I just don't think that's the right answer, you know? And, and so I told him, I, I said, I think you need to power through to resolution. And as much as it seems opposite to say this, it can help to be friendly with your dealer to like be in their, good graces, so to speak, where they want to work with you, where they want to help you get this resolved because you know what, you're not a bad guy like all these other guys out here that are having issues and calling us up and yelling at us every day. You know, you're the kind of guy that they want to work with and try to help out. And man, you're, you know, we're so sorry that you're, that this machine's not working. We're going to do everything we can to get you fixed up as soon as possible versus the guy that's trying to make them feel like crap every time they call on and, and, you know, they're doing what they can anyways, but he's just beating them down. So, I mean, use that to your advantage, right? And it may not matter with some people, but it most likely will with other people. And it's just a better way to treat people anyways when we're all fallible and gonna make mistakes. Now, that said, it doesn't mean let them off the hook, right? And, and so I, I pointed out that I would try to document everything and I like to document things and, and everything I do in email. And it doesn't mean you can avoid, you're avoiding phone calls. You may have phone calls as well, but I like emails because I'm very forgetful. So I like to know when events happened and you can easily do that with an email. You can save their responses written and right there. So you know what the, uh, the other person said, when they said it, maybe how long it was going to take, what the plan was. And so there's a solid concrete place to go back to and reference all of that versus a no on this phone call, whenever it was, you know, he's, you said, you're going to do this and this and this. And they're like, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. I said the exact opposite or whatever. So you're not letting them off the hook, right? Still document it, still do your, your, your best effort there. Still talk to them, you know, every day, right? Say, hey, that part come in, are we able to get that in the shop today or whatever it is, you know, and, and figure out the next step. Ask them anything you do. 99 times out of 100, there's not much you can do. It's up to them, but your willingness to help <laughs> is gonna make it seem like you want this to get expedited. So you're willing to go above and beyond, even though all you're really doing is making a phone call and asking the question and nothing else is going to happen. So talk to a higher up, escalate the issue, right? Make the, make the manager of the store aware. If it's a, if it's a chain, you know, see if you can talk to the, the regional manager or the, as high up of a level as you can go, you know, express your dissatisfaction. Um, you can certainly get nasty about it and, and threaten 
lawsuits and bad reviews and all that kind of stuff, I really don't think that that kind of thing is going to get you uh, get you far in a situation like this. I mean, we've talked about some other scenarios where there's just been some really bad dealers out there, but um, I think that's few and far between, and most folks do want to do good. And so if you can just keep your wits about you, you know, explain. I mean, you can, you can still factually explain the downtime that it's costing you, the extra rental express, the in, uh, expense, the inconvenience of it all, you know, this appointment and trading in that other machine to get this new one and, and just the dissatisfaction of it, right? You, you can still plainly do that and, and get your point across without being a jerk about it, so to speak. So, like I say, I don't have the magic answer and I don't really think that there is a magic answer uh, that's out there. You just, that's just part of life and going through it and it's an inconvenience. And you know what, in the grand scheme of things, I, I bet that tractor works great after they get that issue resolved there. And I did ask for a follow-up if we get some resolution um, to see how this, this concluded once he gets it all figured out. I'd like to know and I'll pass that along to you as well if he's willing to share. But yeah. Doesn't really matter the brand. John Deere, Kubota, Coyote, TYM. Issues can happen with them all. So, you know, I think folks reach out to me when they've kind of, when they're at their wits end. And uh, I don't know, I, I'd like to provide <laughs> better information. Sometimes I don't have it, but the least I can do is, is share anonymously uh, these kinds of videos. And, and maybe somebody in the greater community out there can chime in with something else that may work or help this person out. Or if somebody else is in a similar situation, um, they can scroll through the comments and maybe find a, a little extra tidbit of advice that would help resolve their issue too. But on that note, if you're in the market for a tractor or a tractor attachment, well, you're in luck because that's what we sell. If you go to goodworkstractors.com, you're going to see all sorts of nice low hour tractors for sale, brand new tractor attachments. So for the front end loader or the three point hitch, and we ship nationwide every day of the week. If you're unsure what tractor you need or what tractor attachment, shoot us an email. Let us know what you got going on and we'll set you up with the right equipment to fit your needs. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.